Hi, this is Maya from the Worldwide Good News. Today I have Professor Sami Adwan. He is a professor from Bethlehem University. He is a Fulbright scholar. Uh, he has written a lot of books and a lot of written a lot of articles and research, uh, particularly about the uh, dual narrative teaching between the Palestinian and Israeli um, schools uh, curriculums, and also the role of non-governmental organization in peace building between Palestinians and Israelis. I was a professor, Sami Adwan, of the Bethlehem University. I was reading about the dual narrative teaching process between Palestinians and Israelis, and then um, the book of the role of non-governmental uh, non, uh, organization in peace building. So one is a book and one is a program? Yes, one is a book, which we, as, as I'm also a co-founder of Prime, yeah. The Peace Resources in the Middle East. I'm still co-director of the Palestinian co-director. And actually, when we started, we tried to find out the role of Palestinian and Israeli NGOs on peace building. Oh. What they have achieved, mm -hmm. how much they achieved, in what area, etc. And the reason we did that, we would try to survey and de develop a baseline of what has been done and what should be done uh, uh, you know, in the future. Yeah. And that's why we came, we came as a prime, uh, we came to realize that one area is missing among all the works of NGOs, which is related to the issue of education and the issue of school books. Yeah. And, and when we analyzed the Israeli and Palestinian textbooks, we found out very simple, expected, you know, result that both Palestinian and Israeli textbooks try to neglect purposefully, intentionally, and intentionally the other side. Mm -hmm. Meaning that the Israeli really grow up and the Palestinians grow up not knowing about each other. So yeah, that's yeah. one important thing. The other thing which is also unique that uh, the, the peaceful coexistence between Palestinian uh, Jews uh, and, and, uh, and Jews, uh, Christian and Muslim have not, has not been mentioned throughout the period of only focusing on the conflict. So if that, if, and whenever the other side is mentioned, it's mentioned is in a kind of stereotype, in, in a degrading way, in a, in a kind of in, in a human perspective. So with these stories in mind, we could imagine how the education system is part of the conflict rather than to be part of the solution. Yeah, and then we came with this idea of uh, trying to break these taboos and to break this, uh, you know, you know, um, type of school books and and to uh, invite Palestinian Israeli teachers to write their historical narrative from their side and to present these narratives to each other pupils in classrooms. So to move these children from complete ignorance of the existence of other to mere presence. Of course, we didn't want to enter into uh, the issue of delegitimization of the, of, this, of the self, of the others. It's only to recognize the existence of the other side narrative. And when we uh, thought about it, we invited real school teachers who teach in post schools, in Palestinian schools, in Israeli schools, work together throughout the years, try to work in jointly and separately, and try to write their narrative and to introduce these narratives to each other's schools. So, um, you know, when, when, when children usually know the other side narrative, their perspectives and their attitude will be influenced, will change positively to realize, oh, there's another side of the stories. Yeah. It's not only one story. It's not only our story. Our story is legitimate, but also they have others. The other side have a story, and that could be legitimate. Yes. So okay. that's why we developed the the dual history, the historical narrative, both sides of the 20th centuries, mm -hmm. starting from 1900 to 2000. Yeah. And what we did actually, it's a design where we put the same story of the Palestinian Israelis in the same page with the middle empty space in the middle. Mm -hmm. And this is also by writing our historical narratives, we don't want to also close this uh, history. Yeah. We wanted to open it for 
children from both sides to reflect and react and respond. So that and this is a, a this is a pioneer project. It has never been done before. In, in one way that the other story exists as, as it is, and the same at the same time they you know stand one opposed to the others and one side by side. Oh, that is amazing. So you've done this process with children. How many times is it going into certain coexistence schools? Are they actually using this as a teaching method? Uh, actually, this uh, the teachers who engage in writing these narratives have have produced have introduced these narratives to to their classes, which is designed to ninth and tenth grade, mm -hmm. fifteen and sixteen years old. And they have introduced these to, to their children and try actually to enter into discussion and dialogue. What does it mean to you to know that there is a other narrative exists and that narrative could be different than yours and could be even opposed to what you already been, you know, educating yours, you know, all those years. So from one side, it's been implemented to many schools, to many children. Uh, I, I would say, imagine the three booklets being taught to thousands of children on both sides. Mm -hmm. And the other thing also, uh, this uh, book uh, start to be used as a model for teacher training. Yeah. You know, teaching is not in accumulation of knowledge. It's not, you know, moving from monolithic approach of teaching history to multi-perspectivities. It's actually enter into dialogue with, with the past. Yeah. And actually, the past we hold and the story we hold about the past is what form our current position and attitude and also uh, what will be also have so much effects in our future perspectives. So we thought by creating the, this opportunity for children from both sides to learn about each other narrative, these children will grow up in realizing it's not any more visible and possible to ignore the others. Yeah. We should recognize each other. This is, we, we live so long together in, in enmity, wow. and now we, we, have, we had a chance to learn about the human side of the other. As an Israeli living in the States, growing up in Israel, I always had the question, I knew that there's Arab Israelis or Palestinians, and I could never read their story in school. And as a kid, I asked the same question, uh, why am I the only one being told the story here as a Jew? where is everybody else's stories and leaving school i started looking for the other mm -hmm. story because it really intrigued me a what happened and it's yes. really amazing that it is that is for me education that is the most important step towards peace is educating not only children everybody about the other story and uh, an enemy is somebody's story you haven't heard and once you've heard somebody else's story he cannot be your enemy anymore and, uh, Not anymore. Yes. Yeah. I I fully agree with what you what you said. Actually, that's why initiatives that individual could take, and also NGOs that take these adventures of trying to go beyond the formality and not to wait for the officials and the formats and the politicians uh, to move to this stage. It's much it's much easier and it's the full responsibility of NGOs to move. To to move to these directions. Yeah. And notice what politicians is doing, how much they proceed with the peacemaking. I think this will be what we call it a pre a peace building at the grassroots level. Yeah. Meaning giving the chance of the people to be free to learn more than what is limited or what is only legitimized by the authority. Yeah. That's why I thought yeah. And sorry, and NGOs, just to, uh, to be clear, is non-governmental organizations. So we're really talking about the public peace process, the grassroots movement, R right? Is that, that what you're talking about, right? Yes. Yeah. And now as the peace talks is, is going into, you know, uh, kind of a dark tunnels, and now the challenge among, among uh, you know, facing NGOs and crime, what is the use of our work? And we feel at one point, even in the dark moments, we should continue trying to lift candles and try to create a hope in any of these situations. Meaning our processes will lay the ground. Whenever peace agreement has been reached, already people are tuned to, to accept. 
meaning that we don't want also an agreement to create what's called the cold peace. Yeah. It's like the cold peace that start only by government, only only agreements, official signatures. But what about people? And as Palestinian and as Israeli living in very close proximity, we our future it depends in, in each other's. There's an extreme interdependency between the two societies to realize how much they have common together rather than just to count how much they are different. Yes. And, and that's the challenge now we face. Even the political situation is extremely difficult, hard, whatever. This is actually a spearhead for the future. Yeah. And otherwise, otherwise, we don't want more people to continue losing hope. If we give hope to a child in Israel, we give hope to a, pal- a child in Palestine in itself. It's, it's our habit, our value added, and our dream to continue this work. Is there any way people can actually log in, find more information, uh, you know, really start uh, a, educating themselves about, the, about what, what is being done in the public uh, peace process in the NGO? Are there other places for them to actually learn more and also to engage? Yeah, I, I would say if people are free to log into the crime website, mm-hmm. it will be activated and open. That will they get their name so much about what they have we have done and what we intend to do. And also, we have a new project that we start initiated with Peace It Together mm-hmm. uh, in Canada, yes, where we're going to engage engage uh, university students from both sides, uh, you know, with the Canadian participants. Where they, they themselves they create they uh, give them a chance to analyze the situation, to reflect on the situation, and to develop material that reflect the situation and show you know what's their responsibility toward that. Uh, actually, Prime and Peace together since they joined this venture together, mm-hmm. we we are looking for uh, all kind of supports that we can get from individuals, mm-hmm. politicians, associations, companies. Uh, Philanthropists, well, philanthropists, whatever. We are welcome. We are devoted to create peace. We are devoted to create coexistence. And this is the way how we create the future. Thank you, Sami, so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very Bye-bye. much. Bye-bye. Yeah.